Welcome to today's talk. It's Friday the 3rd of November. Now there's no question that a lot of people died in care homes around the world that should not have died. And this started to come up when we looked at the uh, the British uh, government's uh, COVID inquiry. And I got some really quite moving comments from you about this. And this seems to be an international problem that a lot of people in care homes died who should not have died. Sometimes they weren't given treatments that they should have been given. Other times they were given treatments that they should not have been given. More people died. And this was part of the reason, I believe, that COVID looked a lot more deadly than it actually turned out to be. Because a lot of the people that apparently died of COVID... Now, people did die of COVID. But some of those people, shall we say, were... um, helped along their way uh, somewhat and this is just quite incredible because we're talking about human lives here and they all matter when we have an idea that some people are more important than others some people have got a greater right to life than others that is a very slippery slope and I don't even want to think about that level of dystopian fascist future that, 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 that raises the potential of but anyway let's stick to what we've uh what we've heard here from you Um, talking about deaths in care homes now this is the video here check it out there it is Uh, l um, if you you want to find out who they are you can you can look through the comments they are there but i've just abbreviated them for a confidentiality really Uh, we had the same or even worse situation in swedish care homes where they even refused oxygen to vulnerable elderly having problems breathing now, um, oxygen is a very safe therapeutic for most people. Um, OK, you've got to be careful when people have uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But oxygen is life saving. And uh, to withhold that is, is uh, well, if you withhold it, people, people will die. It, it is that simple. If you can't maintain your, ox- maintain your oxygen levels. Uh, th- there's a particular individual named here who gave out an order apparently now i haven't put him in because i couldn't verify the fact but uh this person or said oxygen was a uh, too complicated and possibly dangerous procedure to be trusted to care uh, home nurses um, um well let me tell you it's also dangerous to be hypoxic because that kills you now um there seems to be this overcompensation in Sweden at the start of the pandemic uh, that, that they were worried about hospitals being overwhelmed, as we were in other places, and people weren't admitted to hospital who should have been, because at least in hospital, while they might not have been given anything that actually cured the, the COVID or helped with the COVID, they could have been given oxygen, which could have kept some people alive. Um without going into the debate about other therapeutics. So th- these are the confirmed deaths here in Sweden, and we see that a lot of these deaths in the first part of the pandemic so this this is this is way back in early 2020 this high peak here uh, quite a few of these deaths we can say now were uh, unnecessary i'm sure but as we'll see in a minute the this is this is this is eight uh, this is de- eight deaths per million level there we'll see in the uk it was way higher than that so whatever problems there were in sweden and there were some it was probably worse in the uk uh, C says my um, 94 year old nan was hospitalized she also tested positive but wasn't too poorly and I'm getting this from many many people in care homes that people with COVID um, often weren't that poorly even the elderly people who we normally think are at greater risk there is a greater risk but a lot of them did fairly well with mild infections uh, no breathing issues just temperature um, I spoke by I, sp- I spoke to her by phone and she was distressed and felt alone with no visitors allowed in the hospital, um, which of course is um, really quite distressing. So they separated her and put her on an end of life plan. It seems a lot of people were put on end of life plans because they tested positive for COVID, not because they were terminally ill. And this is a huge scandal that is starting to come out now. Um, put on an end of life plan, right? Um, does this is this kind of euphemism for helped on their way? I don't know. She died several days later. I was allowed to visit at the end. She was unconscious, breathing fine, ironically, uh, from a respiratory virus. Um, but with no intervention, she was allowed to dehydrate to death. She didn't die of COVID, she died of a policy of euthanasia in the view of C. She was always afraid of hospitals, 
as she believed they took away your control and were places to die. I tried to persuade her they were there to look after you and make you better. But in the end, very sadly, she was right. So not only do we have the tragedy that C suffered here, we've got the guilt that C is feeling for putting her, this individual into care. I'm shocked and disillusioned by all this too, John. Um, right, care homes in Scotland. This is from the COVID inquiry in Scotland now. Uh, this is a report from the Telegraph from the, uh, but from this, uh, you can check it all out at this uh, this site here. I always put the links in as far as possible. So this is Sheila McCall, King's Councillor, senior uh, lawyer, uh, representing bereaved relatives. She says this to the inquiry, relatives have been neglected and left to starve. <laughs> how, how can this be in care facilities? People not giving fluids and food. How, how can this be? I spent, I spent my life te teaching people to look after the sick. And uh, you do talk about food and nutrition. We do lectures on it, of course, but you know it just seems so obvious that it scarcely needs mention. But neglected and left to starve. Blanket ban on visitors. So people that couldn't advocate for themselves lost their family advocates. Phone calls went unanswered for days, sometimes weeks. Not acceptable. Relatives, according to the King's Councillor, treated with disdain and fobbed off. Families told relatives they were only they, they, they were fine, um, only to get a sudden phone call that they were dying. Why did people deteriorate so so rapidly? So relatives were told they were fine. Then shortly after that, getting a phone call to say they were dying. Why is that? Relatives reported a significant deterioration of their loved one's physical and mental health. Uh, that was nothing to do with COVID. Nothing to do with COVID. And yet most of these were registered as COVID deaths. Some suspect that their loved ones were suffering from neglect, dehydration and starvation. The residents that uh, may have been neglected and left to starve, that families are not sure. Families are not sure they were told the truth. This is direct again from the King's Councillor on the Scottish COVID inquiry. Relatives didn't think they were told the truth about their relatives' cause of death, that the usual processes of certification of death were departed from. Why would you do that? We anticipate that the inquiry will hear that people were pressured to agree to sign do not resuscitate notices and that people were not resuscitated even though the such notices were in place. Now, I've worked in healthcare for well over 40 years. Um, if people have a cardiac or respiratory arrest, we have to resuscitate, unless there is a very specific do not attempt resuscitation order in place, which is sometimes appropriate. But here we have this, uh, King, this King's Councillor, she's saying... Um, we anticipate that the inquiry will hear people were pressured to agree to sign. People were not resuscitated. If there's no order in place, someone must be resuscitated. Really, what, what has happened here, and this is a example from Scottish Care Homes now. Now, we looked at the 8 per million deaths in the um, in Sweden. In We can see in the UK it was uh, it was way higher. So the peaks are similar shape. But remember, in Sweden, it was eight per million. In the UK, it's 20 per million. So the situation was way worse, and a lot of these deaths were in care homes um, in the United Kingdom. So what proportion of these deaths, we wonder, were iatrogenic, caused by medical interventions or caused by lack of basic interventions that any child would know that an older person needs fluid and uh, nutrition and i know many people are watching now and from these comments that i've had this is quite distressing that people are now wondering what was the actual cause of death of their of their loved ones 
And even though this is distressing, we need to get to the bottom of this because we need to find out what's happened and make very, very sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, Miss McCall, the King's Councillor, inquiry must investigate potential violations of Article 3 Human Rights Act prohibiting torture, inhuman and degrading treatment. So we have to re- investigate the possibility of torture, inhuman and degrading treatment. And make no mistake, if drugs are used inappropriately, uh, that is a form of torture. That, that can potentially happen. Again, um, relatives will speak of their loved ones lacking food, water and hygiene. That there was inappropriate, inadequate absence or delayed medical attention. S commented on again on the comments on the previous video. My dad with Alzheimer's was diagnosed with COVID in 2020 while in a care home. COVID in inverted commas. Was it really COVID or not? Of course, we would like to know. While in a care home. A few weeks later, I was allowed to see him as they said he was not eating. When I saw him, he looked like a human skeleton. Uh, he was shut in his room without food or water. Liverpool Care Pathway is implicated here. Now, officially we stopped using the Liverpool Care Care Pathway in 2014, but um, the question is, are components of it still being done? Just not called that anymore, is the question. And while I was there, he had a 10-second phone consultation with the GP when a care worker pointed a a mobile phone at, uh, at my dad. Now, I've talked to staff in care homes. Patient was diagnosed, many patients diagnosed with COVID. Um, Telephone consultation with the GP. um, And as a result of that, the patient was put on end of life medication. Uh, How can this happen? Um, The idea that you can do a, a, a telephone consultation and from that decide whether someone goes on an end of life pathway or not. It's, it's impossible to make that assessment objectively and accurately without examining your patient. You know, <laughs> when nurse practitioners were first invented, we we, uh, we work with nurse practitioners, and we taught them all the examination skills, the same as every 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 student doctor learns this, and we taught this to nurse practitioners. What's the point in teaching very comprehensive physical examination skills if if examination skills are not carried out? What, what, what was the point if, if it wasn't done? Um, he looks happy enough, was the GP's verdict. My dad died a couple of days later. And S feels that this was an extreme case. V, um, in contrast, I kept my 80-year-old parents isolated in their home until Omicron dominated. Yeah. They took vitamin C vitamin D, zinc, they were not vaccinated, their inevitable illness was mild in that case. In that case. Which of course is wonderful. Back to the uh, Scottish inquiry. Medical records missing or incomplete for fatalities. King's counsel to the Scottish inquiry. Residents forced into agreeing to do not resuscitation plans. The whole point about these is they are entered in voluntarily, in negotiation with the relatives, in negotiation with the individual themselves, in the negotiation with staff, and a consensus is reached that is in the best interests of the individual. That's the key phrase, the best interests of the individual. But if it's forced, how can that be the case? How can this be forced? Evidence would point to a systematic failure in the model of care. Scottish COVID bereaved group to the uh, Scottish inquiry. Uh, um, Discharging untested hospital patients into care homes. Ultimately a death sentence for the elderly. So patients just discharged. So to give that figures in Scotland, 113 Hospital patients tested positive, then transferred to care homes. People that were known to be COVID positive. 
thereby ceding the care homes, guaranteeing the spread. Um, 3,061 transferred from hospital to homes without being tested. March, April, May 2020. Scotland's a small country, remember. COVID allowed to enter the homes and spread like wildfire. Uh, round about this time, I'm not sure when, but Matt Hancock said he put a ring of steel around care homes. It would appear not. It would appear not. T says, again, on the comments of the Lies and Secrets video, the same thing happened in Ontario, Canada. People stood spending hours outside their loved ones' windows. Windows of the care homes, helplessly saying things like, I love you and even final goodbyes through the glass to their elderly. Helpless parents. They're the reports. Now, Lord Stevens, who led the NHS until 2021, slight separate matter here, talking about Matt Hancock, wanted to decide, direct quote, who should live and who should die. Politicians. If the hospitals became overwhelmed. The Secretary of State for Health and Social Care took the position that in this situation, he, rather than say the medical profession or public, should ultimately decide who should live and who should die, in the view of uh, Lord Stevens. If you are terrified by the idea of politicians making decisions over life and death, then you have good historical precedent for doing this. Just look at the history of the 20th century or the 19th century or any other century you have knowledge of. Politicians taking control over such decisions... And that was allowed to happen. Fortunately, this horrible dilemma never crystallised. I felt that we were well served by the medical profession in consultation with patients to the greatest extent possible making these kind of decisions. Um, the, the, the idea that Politicians would make decisions over life and death is terrifying. Doctors, nurses, people involved in the care are in the best place to do that. Part of the problem seems to be that doctors and nurses now are bound by protocol and national regulations rather than their own individual clinical judgment. And we've seen many examples on this channel of what happens when doctors aren't allowed to make their own uh, clinical assessments when some treatments are essentially uh, enforced by national regulations when some treatments are denied thou shalt not give this treatment doctor the national protocol is no better than your clinical judgment doctor it's, it's not a, it's not a territory i want to be it's, it's, I want to go to, but it's where we've been. It's where we've been. Mr Cummings, in his testimony, um, I must stress that uh, leaving Matt Hancock in post is a big mistake. This was the Secretary of State for Health. In the view of Mr Cummings as a proven liar, who nobody believes or should believe on anything. And we face going into the autumn crisis with him in charge of the NHS still back in, this is 2020. Um, right, so what we need is we need politicians that are completely honest, completely transparent, and always make decisions in the best interests of their people, and empower professionals to use their professional discretion for the benefit of all humanity. If you think that's happening now, great. Um, I'm not convinced that it always happens now, unfortunately. That's what we need, the, uh, the ethos of public service. We need people who go into politics, not for their own psychopathic power trip. Not that I'm talking about anyone in particular here, but I'm genuinely not. Um, not for their own self-enrichment, self-engrandisement, 
self-importance, but to be a, a servant of the people. Um, he, he that would be a leader should be a servant. I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to prattle on too much, but um, I think all those notes will probably fit in the description and uh, you can read through them. Do read through the comments for yourself. Um, sometimes difficult reading, but um, and if there's any academics out there, if you just take the comments from this video, there's m many thousands of them, but the, the, the comment from that video lies and... Uh, Lies and Secrets on YouTube. There's a whole qualitative study there. And uh, a qualitative paper could come out of that if someone took the time to do that. And that's what we need. We, 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 need, um, we need to interview care home workers from all over the country, work out what went wrong, generate the themes of what went wrong, and uh, d do that as a proper research study. That's what needs to be done so we get this on a firm academic basis and then hey if all these anecdotes and suspicions turn out to be wrong the research will disprove it but at the moment i really don't see that being done and uh i'm sorry that so many of you have so difficult um, distressing experiences um, with, with your own loved ones i'm, I'm going to leave it there i mean um, I'll just tell you, my dad was in hospital for a lot of this time. You couldn't go and see him. It was just completely uh, unacceptable. Thank you for watching.